Would you like to become a fascinating personality, break free from plateaus, and gain power over your mental resources and your full potential? You came to the right place. Welcome to a magical journey to yourself. This show is made in Germany. If you like the show, please subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or PureMindMagic.club. Welcome to Season 1, Shaping Your Reality. And here is your host, international magician, speaker, and book author, Victoria Mavis. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Pure Mind Magic and this special Sunday episode with my amazing guest, Sean Anderson. This episode has really an amazing energy. Sean is the author of seven motivational books and one of his books hit number one Amazon ranking in motivation and self-help. Sean is a lifetime entrepreneur and has a has built a million dollar company. He has already been in more than 45 countries and really helps people to produce results. He's also the creator of Extra Mile America and you will enjoy now a really interesting interview. Sean is an unlimited thinker and you will find out in this interview what that exactly means. Before we dive in and I welcome Sean to the show, I wanted to quickly let you know in case you love podcasts as much as I do and listen to several shows and different episodes, sometimes it gets a little bit overwhelming and it's tough to keep track on what you heard where and also to collect all the links and book recommendations and websites and whatever is interesting to you and find them again. And exactly for that, I have the perfect solution because I created the podcast listening journal where you can note down everything you hear, everything you would like to recommend and everything you would like to research after listening. So you have everything in one place. I would recommend for you to get the hard copy version of it. So I will leave a link in the show notes for you to grab your copy. And especially on this Sunday now, there will be an amazing discount. But just this Sunday, October no, sorry, November 18th. So then it will go back to the regular price when you listen a day after. But you can grab it this day. But now let's dive into the interview with the amazing Sean Anderson. Sean, welcome to the show. Uh, it's great to be with a magician, Victoria. Thank you so much for having me on today. You're very welcome. And is it your first time with a magician on a podcast? You know, yes. So how lucky did I get to get the magician, Victoria Mavis? I'm so lucky, right? Yes, you are. And <laughs> I, you have to reveal a lot of secrets in this show. So I have a lot of questions prepared for you to get all the audience <laughs> really fired up and motivated to get magic results the day they are listening to this episode. But before we dive into the interview, can you share a unique secret about you with us? Mmm, a unique secret. How about this one? It's not much of a secret, but it's rather unique. I have now walked across six countries in the last four years. How about that? Wow, that is pretty strong for the beginning, I would say. So, Sean, to give the audience a quick overview, can you tell us who you are, what you're doing, and what brought you to that very moment in your life? Well, I really believe I'm a pretty ordinary guy, and what makes me perhaps different is I, I believe in living an extraordinary life. I'm one of those people that just don't dream life and wish it for to happen. I'm one of those people that actually dream life and then breathe 
magical air into my dreams and make them happen. I believe in creating a plan. I believe in working that plan. I don't let fear stop me. I just am motivated by the adventure of life. Wow, that sounds really inspirational. And I think gives us a good overview in the beginning. So because you are a motivational author of seven books, can you tell us how do you get in the right mood? How do you start your day? You know, starting your day is super, super important because we've got a couple of choices when we begin the day. We can wake up and go, oh, God, what do I have to do today? Oh, no, I've got that meeting to go to. Oh, geez, I forgot to get milk at the store. Oh, no, the kids need breakfast. Oh, my God, the dog went to the bathroom on the carpet. We can start our day like that. Or we can go with a completely different mind frame and start our day much more positive. You see, because, Victoria, how you start your day, it's going to have a little magic spell on the rest of your day. If you start your day with negativity, the day is going to flow in a negative direction. If you start your day with positivity, the day will flow in a positive direction. So I begin my day every day asking myself before my brain gets out of control three questions. The first question I ask myself is, what am I excited about doing today? What one thing am I really excited about today? Because I want to start thinking about something really cool to get my brain going in the right direction. The second question I ask myself, who can I encourage today? Because we want to take our focus off ourselves, and the more we put our focus on other people, the more value we add to the world. The third question I ask myself, What am I grateful for today? So what am I excited about? Who can I encourage or empower? What am I grateful for today? Because those three questions start sending my mind in a whole different direction and they turn my day headed in the right way. These are really magical questions, I would say. And you are so right, Sean. It really makes a difference in which mood and at what frequency you start your day and the hours will follow in this mood. So we now know how you start your day. How do you normally end your day? In what kind of mood do you go to bed? And what are your suggestions to get a really good sleep to wake up with fresh energy? Well, you know, it's a good, it's, it's always a good question. And, and I, I think the way that I always certainly go to bed with my best energies, I'm a big believer in, in exercise and health. I mean, if we really don't have our, if we don't have our health in life, everything else suffers just a little bit. Just imagine if when you have the flu, you know, all of a sudden your relationships aren't as good. You're not as productive. You're not as effective. So every single day I exercise hard. I exercise well. So my body is physically tired and ready for a good night's sleep. The other question is, what kind of mood do I go into, you know, before I go into sleep? Man, I always try to have gratitude. I always look for that one thing that I can be grateful for today. I mean, I can sit there and focus on all the bad things and all the, the people that might have unsubscribed and the book sales that I didn't make and the speaking gigs I didn't get and the media interview that I didn't get. I could think about those if I wanted to, but what value is that going to have for my life? So I really focus on, wow. What special, what magical thing happened today that I can go to bed feeling really, really grateful? Because every single day, all of us can find at least one. That is absolutely true. So, Sean, you call yourself an unlimited thinker. I really love this expression. And we all know that everything starts with a thought. Every change we make, every result we get, just everything around us started with a thought. So what exactly do you mean by unlimited thinker and how can the listeners become unlimited thinkers too? Well, I believe that so many people, so many of us, they, we live with restraints. We think of all the things that we cannot do. I can't do this because I'm too old. I can't do this because I don't have enough money. I can't do this because I'm not smart enough. I can't do that because I'm not in good enough shape. You know, I don't, I don't look at life as, as the things that I can't do. I, I, I think I can do that. So, so I might not be ready to do that yet, but what steps do I need to take so I can do that? I open up my thinking. I don't look at the limitations of life and say, oh, I can only go so far. I, I can't go over the other side of that mountain because that mountain's there. I think, no, man, 
I can, I can climb that mountain, get to the top and go down the other side. I can still see what's on the other side of the mountain. It's that sort of thinking that I just don't let myself be restrained by limitations. Life is not what you can't do. Life is what you can do. Yes, that is really good advice. And I like your perspective about that and making this shift in your mind where to focus on. So what would you say as a motivational speaker, what are the best motivational tips you can give the listeners even when they don't feel in a mood of being motivated? Mm. I think the greatest gift that any of us can ever give ourselves is the gift of awareness. It's, it's, that, it's that moment where we don't like what we're thinking and we have the magical ability to redirect our thoughts into a different direction because what you think determines what you feel, what you feel determines what we're going to do. So if we know that that's a circle, the, the thoughts lead to the feelings, which lead to the actions, the one thing that we can control is that computer that sits on top of our shoulders. We can reprogram that. So awareness, having the awareness to say, man, I don't like my thinking. I've got stinking thinking right now and I need to do something to change that thought. When we, we can re-spin whatever is happening to ourselves in life, we change the feeling that we're feeling, which then changes the action that we throw out into the world. When we change the action that, throws, that we throw out in the world, everything about our life begins to change. So What is the greatest gift you can give yourself again? The gift of self-awareness. I really like that. So do you even have a really good escape plan what you do when you really feel grounded and need to get up or when you feel stuck? What are some actions you can take to make an instant shift? I believe that motion affects emotion. Motion affects emotion. So I do something physical. Even if I'm a little tired, I will go out for a walk. I'll pick up my pace. I'll go just a little bit further because all of a sudden what I'm doing is I'm creating positive momentum within myself by the motion. When again, when I start creating positive uh, motion, I'm going to start creating positive emotion. My thoughts will start to change. I'll start feeling better about myself. I'll start to see that whatever I'm going through is not the end of the world. You know, so that's what I'll always do. If I'm ever feeling so super super down, stop what I'm doing, I get outside and I start moving. That's how I change a day's direction. Yes, I think that was one of the magic tricks you can do when you really feel stuck. So, Sean, you are also really focused on results and you help people to get results. And a lot of people get stuck along the way. So they have great ideas in their minds, but can't get them out and can't get them to the streets really working. So what are some tips to really get results and get out of the procrastination? Well, you know, I think what... What I have found that stops most people is certainly fear. Fear might be the darkest four-letter word that there absolutely is in life because it stops us from living the best version of ourselves. We're afraid to get on the airplane to go to the new country that we want to go to. We're afraid to start writing the book because of what other people might think. We're afraid to go start a new job because what if it's worse than the job I'm in? Fear. So what's my secret of getting past fear? I make the adventure bigger than the fear. Whatever I'm about to experience, I make that adventure in my mind bigger than the fear that I feel. And when the adventure becomes bigger than the fear, we can always move forward. That is really cool. You also mentioned in the beginning excitement. Why would you say, Sean, that excitement is such a powerful emotion and what are ways to feel it? Well, I believe that The, the two gifts I wish I could give the world, I wish I could give the world a many, many gifts, but let's just, let's just, let's just share two. I wish that I could give every person the gift of passion, which is, is another word for saying excitement, the gift of passion. Because when you live life with passion in your heart, you can always wake up excited. You can always have a contagious energy that helps spread in your relationships and everything you do. Passion. 
The second gift that I would give people is the gift of purpose, knowing what it is that you want to apply your passion to. Because when you have both passion and purpose working together, then we absolutely have the opportunity to create our most magnificent life, passion and purpose. If you're not feeling passionate about your life, I suggest that you figure out and find out those things that make you happy. Because when we do that which makes us happy, the passion certainly builds. And then as far as purpose and finding one's purpose, just what inspires you? What motivates you? What cause do you care about? What is it that you want to do? What footprints do you want to leave? Purpose. It doesn't have to be related to the job that you do 40 hours a week. It could simply even just be the volunteering for the animal shelter on weekends. That's your purpose. Find your purpose. Find your passion. Find your best self. Really nice said, Sean, here. So we got the results and how to get them. And interestingly, you have written seven books. That is really a lot. And you're still very young and dynamic, what I like. So how do you make it happen to write really seven books and get them all done and finished? Well, first off, I just want to say you are absolutely so kind to think that I'm so young, still at age 55. So thank you, Victoria Mavis. The, as far as writing the books, you know, man, if you've got something in your heart, you know, you, you, you just want to get it out there. Never once have I written a book for myself. I've always written a book because it's the message that I care to share. And so when you care to really share something, you're much more apt to get it across to the finish line. When you focus more outwardly on the message, perhaps being read by someone else, it helps you get across the finish line rather than if it's all an inward experience. Uh, as far as writing a book, the technical aspects of it, certainly I, I, I have an idea. I know exactly what it is that I want to write about. I break it down into chapters and segments. I make the whole project smaller. It's the same as if you were to run a marathon. You can't start at the starting line and get 26.2 to the finish line by snapping your fingers. You have to go 500 yards, then one mile, then three miles, then to the seven mile mark, then to the 15. Writing a book is the same way. When you outline each of the chapters and say, you know what, I've now outlined 10 different chapters for this book. All I have to do is complete one of those sections at a time. I don't have to write the whole book at a time. I don't have to become overwhelmed with the entire goal because if we don't break our goals down into smaller parts, that's why we fail to achieve them because they become so overwhelming we just give up. Yes, that is so true. That makes a lot of sense. So you accomplished that, what is really amazing with all the books, and you are really in this positive and high energy, I can feel that. But what would you say, looking back, Sean, was your biggest struggle in life and how did you overcome it? Mm. Well, you know, life life is not an easy, life is not easy, Victoria, and every every day there's life will find a way to maybe punch you in the stomach or knock you to your knees. And, and I think once we understand that, but we also understand that we have the power to get up off the floor and push ourselves back up at any time. You know, for example, just, I guess it was last December, I was in Barcelona. I was about to take a, a cruise, a transatlantic cruise uh, across uh, the country and excuse me, across the ocean. And, and uh, two hours before I was to board the ship, I got robbed in Barcelona on Las Ramblas there, and and I lost, I lost my passport, I lost my wallet, I lost all my money, I lost my phone. So in moments when life punches you hard, you have a choice. You can either stay on the the ground and be defeated and never get up again and chase whatever life you want to chase, or you can say, you know what, you know what, this is this is what I this is where I am. This is my challenge. I've never had this experience before, but I've had other challenges that I've come through and I'm going to see what happens here. I'm going to go through this positively. I'm going to break it down into step by step so I don't become overwhelmed and I'm going to survive because I am a survivor. When you take that kind of philosophy through every one of your challenges, I am a survivor and then I'm a thriver 
you know, there's nothing that really can't block us. If there's people out there going through serious health problems, think back to a time when you were going through a struggle, but yet you made it through successfully. Think back to those times when life has punched you in the gut, but you made it through. We all have those moments where we rose. And when we know that we're capable of rising, we can rise every time. Yes, that sounds so motivational. And you're right, we all have to deal with these issues and things that are coming up and we can decide how we react to it. And you mentioned traveling and at the beginning, you said that you have seen six continents. So what brought you to travel the world? You know, actually, I, I've, uh, I've, I've walked across six countries in the last four years. I've been to, I guess I'm closing in on my 50th country that I've seen. You know what? We live on this, this, this blue marble out in the middle of this black space. And for some reason, I just think that wherever I am is always home. I don't have to have home at one specific address, but as long as I'm here on this 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 blue marble, I want to go see as much of it as I can because every time I go somewhere in the world, Victoria, I get a chance to learn. I get a chance to meet people that I've never met before. I get a chance to see cultures, see sites, have experiences that I would never have lived. So my address is is the earth. And, 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 and I hope that by the time I'm finished, I visit 75, 80, 90 countries. Could I possibly visit 100? Man, only an unlimited thinker could think about that, right? <laughs> so, so, you know, it, there's just so many cool things to see and do. There's more to life than just having a conversation with a checker at my local grocery store and saying hi to the mailman who delivers my mail every day. Because there's amazing things out there to learn, to see, to do, to, 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 to feel, to experience. Now is our time. It's your time, Victoria, to, to live as fully as you can dream. It's my time to live as fully as I can dream because someday, someday it will no longer be our time. Yes, wise words. And you see, I imagine you even bigger. So this is why I had in my mind stuck the six continents instead of the six countries. But it's really a lot, a big number from countries you have seen already. And I'm sure you will reach the 100 because you are this unlimited thinker. So speaking about thinking. We all think in patterns and often life keeps repeating in patterns. What is your best advice on how to interrupt patterns and really create new experiences? Again, it comes down to self-awareness, right? Because if you don't have the self-awareness to see that you're, you're repeating your past mistakes or you're walking the same road you've walked, then you're going to continually walk that road. You're never going to realize it, but you're always going to go, wow, my life is so average. My life is so mediocre. Nothing exciting ever happens to me. But it's that moment of self-awareness to go, man, you know what? I, this is just like the relationship I had last time. And in fact, that's like the relationship I had the time before. I don't want that anymore. So why do I keep choosing the same person? That, and, and so we identify that pattern and then we make sure not to walk that road again. We find those 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 specifics that cause us to not move forward, those specifics that cause us to not achieve what we want, and then we stop doing them. We create the life that we live. We choose the path that we walk. You can walk left or you can walk right. If you keep walking left and the same things keep happening to you, then man, I think it's pretty. St it, that's pretty obvious that next time go right. Yes, so that makes sense. And you make the decision and we are the sum of the decisions we make and we can choose it in every moment and produce different results by it. So what would you say, Sean, uh, yeah, about thinking? What could we do to really become aware of the thoughts we have on a daily basis? Well, I think you need to be aware of what thoughts that you're planting and growing in your brain. You, you know, because because what you're what you're putting in your brain is what you're going to think. Uh, I'm a big believer that every single day I have to hold myself accountable to 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 growing my best self of continuing to plant motivational, inspirational uh, thoughts in my head. I mean, if if I were to plant doom and gloom thoughts 
oh no, the world is ending. Oh no. Well, I'm going to act like that. I'm going to be like that. We become what we think. We become what we read. We become what we see. We become the people that we hang around with. We become the music that we hear. We become the movies that we see, the books that we read. That's who we become. If you want to become something bigger and greater than you already are, start thinking about bigger and greater things than you already do. Very nice. I love that. So nice. Sad. We become the movies we watch. That is really amazing. So, Sean, you already mentioned the term of potential and living your full potential. And it is said when it comes to our mind and brain that we only use a small percentage of our potential. Some say 20%, some say even less. What would you say are ways to train our mind? or to use more of our mental capacity? I, again, I think it comes down to an awareness. I mean, here, here is a really magical thought that really blows my mind. If we, Victoria, were to have this interview today on a beach and the sand, we were both to kneel down and we were to put our hand into the sand and we were to take a whole hand of sand and watch each of those small grains slip through our fingers, I would look at you and I would say this. I would say, Victoria, Do you know that there are more stars in the universe than there are grains of sand, not only on this beach, but on every beach on the earth? That scientists have determined that there are more stars in the universe than on every grain of sand on every beach on the earth. So when we start imagining that we live in a universe with such unlimitedness, One that keeps expanding every single second that gets so big that there's no end. Then why do we restrain ourselves with thinking things so small? When we give ourselves the freedom to have a bigger vision, we give ourselves permission to live a bigger life. Yes, also very nice said. So do you have any recommendations for the listeners when it comes to books or films that help to think bigger? Mm. When I uh, when I graduated from college, I started reading every motivational book that I could possibly find. I, I, I wanted to learn from all of these motivational thinkers about what made them tick and what inspired them. I started reading the biographies of great men and great women, finding out what it was about their thinking that inspired them. I think that every single book of an inspirational nature that one picks up, we can find a golden nugget. That one sentence, that one paragraph, that one page, that one chapter that can inspire us to be bigger, live bigger. I can go back and pick up a book that I've once read before, and I can find something new in that book that I've never discovered. But one book that I will share with you that really did change my world, and it certainly changed the direction of how I choose to write today, is by an author named Og, O-G, Og Mandino, M-A-N-D-I-N-O, Og Mandino. He wrote a book called The Greatest Miracle in the World. And Og Mandino, instead of telling me the 10 principles of how to be successful, to how to be a millionaire, to how to dress with success, to how to catch the woman of your dreams, to how to do this, he simply shared a motivational story in a fictional type way. That book had such a dramatic impact on me that that's why I choose and how I write today is like that. So Og Mandino, The Greatest Miracle in the Book, was my most inspirational book of all time. Nice. I have never heard of that, but it sounds really interesting. And it sounds that it also stands out from all the motivational books that are out there on the market. So nice advice from he from you here. And Sean, you are also the creator of Extra Mile America. Can you explain to us what that is and what you're doing there for the people? Mm, Victoria, I, I just want to thank you so much for doing such amazing research and and asking such uh, great questions and really understanding who your guests are. Thank you so much. I don't always have the privilege to, to, uh, to talk to hosts and hostesses who are so absolutely on top of their game. So thank you. Um, for Thank you for going the extra mile. Uh, extra Mile America started 
uh, back in 2009, America and the rest of the world was really going through a tough economic time. In the States, we were having foreclosures, home foreclosures at an all-time high. Businesses were closing. Even banks were closing here in America. And people started losing a lot of confidence in whether or not their futures were secure or not. Uh, so I wanted to remind people that if you really want to create the life you love and create a positive, empowering future that you could count on, you don't look to the government to create a program. You don't look to your boss to keep the company going, and you don't look to your spouse to make your world better. But you look at the man or the woman in the mirror, and you say, what am I doing to make my world bigger and better? What am I doing to make a difference? But you don't keep walking the same status quo road. You've got to do more, give more, add more value. You've got to go the extra mile. So I decided to take my, my, my small voice and do something uh, to remind people that the real difference in life to change life is, is when you go the extra mile. In a Forrest Gump sort of way, I pedaled a bicycle from one ocean to the other ocean over 4,000 miles. My staff created events in 21 cities across the United States where I had the opportunity to interview over 200 people who had been pre-identified as having gone the extra mile to make a difference in society, to chase a dream that seems so overwhelming to make it happen. And at the end of my ride, I gave away $10,000 of my own money to the stories most inspiring to me. As I was pedaling across the state of Nevada, which is very close to the western side of America, there's a stretch 60 miles where you have to ride your bike on the highway because there's no other road you can pedal across. There's 60 miles that there's no shade, no nothing, and I'm pedaling in 110 degree heat, and I'm going, what else can we do to make extra mile America get on the map? So I created this day called Extra mile day on November 1st. And at that time, I told my staff, go contact the mayors and have them recognize the extra mile volunteers in their community who are doing great things to make their city better. In 2009, when I started that, there were 23 cities in the United States where the mayors recognize and clap for their heroes. This year, November 1st, 2018, there will be over 550 cities in America declaring extra mile day. Wow, that is so amazing and also so motivational, Sean. So can you share with us, how is it possible to connect with you for the listeners or become a part of Extra Mile America or yeah, just find out more about you and your amazing stories and your great motivation? Well, thank you again, Victoria. Uh, you go to seananderson.com, S-H-A-W-N, Sean Anderson, A-N-D-E-R-S-O-N, seananderson.com. You can certainly find out more about me. You can subscribe to a weekly inspirational blog that I put out that is just quick, short, and it has two intentions, to either push you up to the top of your mountain or to pull you up to the top of your own mountain. Uh, it's certainly there you can find more about Extra Mile America as well, too. Very nice. So I will put all that in the show notes that people can find everything about you as well as your seven books. All the information will be there. So Sean, do you have some final thoughts for the listeners? Something they could apply today or tomorrow to make a change in their life or reach a goal what they have for a long time? time but didn't get it so far you know life is really really short and you know sometimes we keep saying i'm going to do that tomorrow i'm going to do that next year i'll do that when i have more money i'll do that when whenever whenever well eventually life runs out so don't don't leave your goals and wishes and dreams on the table go after them now Live the life that you want to now because we're never guaranteed that we get a next week, a next month, or even a next year. Live the life that you dream now. You're so right. So we have to be really careful with our time because once it's gone, we can't get the time back and we can't save time for later like we can do with money. So I think also this is really our biggest asset, what you have mentioned there. And also I wanted to ask you, Sean, because you are a motivational speaker and you mentioned that you read every motivational book you could get, but what got you into the speaker scene and how are your speaking gigs running around the world? 
You know, I, I first off, I I can just consider myself a guy that just wants to inspire people to lead a bigger life. I mean, my life mission is to empower one million people to lead a more positive, purposeful, and passionate existence. So when you have a life mission like that, you have to say, well, what what opportunities do I have to be able to maybe plant seeds or water seeds? And I can do it through either writing or I can do it through speaking. So that's really, I just look for opportunities to be able to maybe plant and water seeds that help people maybe take take more risks or follow their own dreams a little bit more. Um, you know, I don't, I don't really consider myself a motivational speaker. I just, I just consider myself to be a, a, a guy that lives with a lot of passion and a lot of purpose. Hmm. I really like that. And you are on your mission and have your big vision. So just perfect. Do you have for the end now any favorite quote you have and would like to share? Mm, favorite quote. Hmm. As I'm thinking about it, do you have a favorite quote that you like to share? Well, I really like the quote that every adventure is just one decision away. And I think we have spoken about mm. adventures today. That's perfect. Well, how about this one from a from a European artist, Mark Chagall? If I create from the heart, nearly everything works. If from the head, almost nothing. Yes, very nice said. And I think there is a lot of magic in that and also telling us that we should not overthink everything and create from our intuition, from our heart. And as you said, with our passion what is so important and doing the things we love with the time we have here on this earth so sean thank you so much for being on pure mind magic today you have been a great guest with so much motivation for the audience i would love to stay in contact with you and see if we can bring you back to the show well that would be my privilege and thank you so much for living your life with imagination And as a magician, you know, you're imagining tricks and you're, you're, you're expanding the imagination of people. And if we all just looked at our own lives with a little bit more imagination and magic, life would really become more magical. Perfect last words. Thanks again, Sean, and have a magical day. Did you feel this amazing energy of Sean? It's really incredible how powerful that is. And I'm sure you can imagine that this gentleman really produces results. So I hope you took something great away from this interview today. And you are probably curious about the next interview next week. So I was looking what would be a good fit. And I decided to bring Mary Beth Highland on the show. We met actually in person in Philadelphia at Podcast Movement. And Mary is the founder of Spark Vision. That's a company that is all about connecting people and their mission is to create environments where people thrive. So an amazing topic and Mary is really living that because in this episode she shares the story where she kind of locked herself away from the world to be really productive and she wrote every single newsletter for a whole year year in this time where she was on her own retreat. This is a really inspirational story and you can listen to that next Friday. And just to give give you a quick reminder, today is a day where you can get a big discount for my podcast listening journal, the book you can take everywhere with you and keep all your insights and experiences and million dollar ideas you get from listening to podcasts from all around the world. It is on Amazon. You will find a link directly in the show notes to grab your copy and it will be delivered to your home anywhere in the world, no matter where you are at that very moment in time and space. All for today. Until next time, create some magic. <laughs>